Hi guys, hope you're all doing fantastic. Welcome back to my channel, Everyday Life, the channel that deals with complex topics and breaks them down to simple 10 minute videos. Today, let's talk about 3D printing. If you're watching this video, the chances are that you've already realized the value and the potential of 3D printing in the near future. 3D printing is one of the fastest developing technologies and fastest evolving technology trends uh, in the recent times. The 3D printing started with small printing small objects like these ones and it eventually evolved today even body parts are being printed on 3D printers. And it's not just the body parts, uh, even houses are being printed uh, on 3D printers but you, know, you can imagine how big the 3D printing has evolved, that whole technology has evolved to. And even clothes are being 3D printed and for that matter even food is being 3D printed now. And in the future we see that this technology is only going to develop more and more and then uh, probably there will be a day in the near future that every one of us would have a 3D printing uh, 3D printer in our homes or either we will be using something which uses which is connected to the whole idea of 3D printing. But don't just assume thinking that 3D printing is only for those science geeks. 3D printing can be for everyone. Even uh, imagine a, a small part or a small knob in your car has gone on your dashboard, something is, go is broken. How would you fix it? Ideally, you have to replace the whole panel or otherwise sometimes when you don't get the spare parts, you try to fix it with the glue and things like that. And you can probably sometimes never even solve it. So if you have 3D printing knowledge, you can actually design that part in 3D, uh, 3D software. You can make that part in using 3D printing and then you can actually fit it into your car perfectly. And uh, it's not just these things, things like a vacuum cleaner, if you can, a part in the vacuum cleaner is broken or a part in the refrigerator is broken. You can fix these using 3D printers. It's not just for fixing actually, it also gives you the flexibility of making products your own way, the way you want. One of my friend has recently made a, a, a pen stand that fits onto a fridge in the specifications that he need. And also it's also about customization. You can put your names on it or whatever writing you want to put on it or whatever theme you want it. There is no limit. You don't have to find the exact thing that you need in the market. Well, you, you have a requirement, you make you design it in 3D printing softwares and then you print it in 3D printing. It's as simple as that. In this video, we are going to cover the following topics about 3D printing. One, the different types of 3D modeling softwares that are available in the market and where to download them from, how do, how do you get them? And two, if you don't want to learn the 3D modeling software, if you want to use ready-made available models from the market, where, which websites you can download it from, and uh, three, the different types of uh, 3D printing uh, softwares that are there in the market. And when I say 3D printing software, that is the software that, that you need for you to convert your 3D models into a printing software, which are called the slicing software. So we're going to discuss about those slicing softwares and four, the number of uh, the types of 3D printers that are there in the market and which printer is good for what and all that briefly and then five the different types of printing materials that are available in the market again like you might need a print material which is very strong uh, uh, and or you might need a material which is very flexible you might need a material which is transparent so we, we're going to discuss about different types of materials that are uh, in the available in the 3d printing technology today but before we start with the main session uh, thank you for all your love and support to the channel and if you're not a subscriber yet please subscribe to this channel to help bring before you more videos like this this channel is all about researching different topics and making short videos on them so that you don't have to spend a lot of time trying to learn them from the basic 3d printing is something i've learned from the last six to eight months and this is the short video i'm making so that you don't have to spend your six to eight months again learning the same things let's start with the first one the 3d modeling softwares the 3D modeling software is where you actually design and make the 3D model that you want to build. So there are different 3D modeling softwares available in the market. One of the best one that is available for free to download is Tinkercad. Tinkercad is from AutoCAD company and it is one of the best companies in the world when it comes to 3D modeling and 3D animation. Uh, you can download it for free from their website and uh, it is quite easy and uh, to learn and it is quite easy to execute everything in the software. Apart from Tinkercad, there are many other uh, software that are available in the market. I'll give the list in the description below, but I'm going to quickly mention them to you now so that you know what they are. SketchUp, Blender, AutoCAD, Fusion 360, Rhino 3D, Revit, 3D Studio Max, Cinema 4D, and Maya. Maya is the software that I have uh, been practicing from the last six months, six to eight months actually. And that is the software I have uh, 
gain my expertise on now. All the softwares more or less do the same job. It is just that some of the software have advanced tools for making the 3D models much more quicker and easier. When it comes to Maya, it's one of the best in the market and it is used by Pixar, Disney and everyone for making all the films. The easiest way to get Maya is uh, to start with the trial version. You can uh, get 30 days for free trial from the Maya website. You can download it from there and then enjoy the free trial. Uh, even with all the other softwares, you get uh, around 30 days to 45 days free trial versions and you can use them to make your initial 3D models and to gain your experience on 3D modeling. 3D modeling is something I've learned in the uni, so it's quite easy for me to start with Maya, but if you are a beginner, absolute beginner with no experience on any graphic softwares like Photoshop or Illustrator or anything like that, the best place for you to start, I would recommend is Tinkercad. Tinkercad, like I told you, is quite good. And But if you have any experience uh, in some basic 3D modeling and all that, the best one of the best softwares that you can get your hands on is Maya. The next topic that we're going to discuss about is about downloading 3D models. Imagine you have a 3D printer and you're not too good with 3D modeling, but you would like to use the advantage of, uh, of 3D printers. Then one of the best thing that you can do is you can download the 3D models from the free software, from the free websites that are available on the internet. There are literally thousands and thousands of 3D models covering all varieties of objects on the planet and you can download these 3D models for free and you can uh, you can print them on your 3D printer using the slicing softwares. These are some of the websites from which you can download 3D models for free and they have a huge uh, variety of models and types. Uh, some of the websites, uh, again, the full list I have uh, listed down in the notes below and uh, I've just listed them down again for you here and there are loads, literally loads and loads of free 3D downloadable websites that you can use to your advantage to print the 3D models that you need. Now that you have a 3D model in your hand uh, to print either from your the software from where in which you built your own 3D model or from a free download website, you have a 3D model. Now the next thing that you need is a slicing software that converts this 3D model into a format which the 3D printer understands. There are different slicing softwares in the market. Again, most of them are free and uh, slicing softwares are actually pretty simple to use. It's almost like a just simple print software. It basically converts your 3D model like this, for example, into layer by layer and it tells the software which layer to, uh, how to print each layer by layer and as you, as you go, it prints layer by layer and prints the whole object there. So that's the purpose of a slicing software. What main purpose the slicing software plays is uh, it kind of helps you to decide uh, which direction to print your model in, what size to print your model in, and how much uh, you um, area, how much strength you want to give to your 3D model. Imagine, for example, you have a model like this, okay? And if you want to print this one, you have two options. Either you can print it completely hollow or you can print, print it with full material so that it, be, it will be absolutely solid and heavy as you want it. Depending upon how you need, you can print a 3D model. So imagine if it is only for a display purpose and there's no actually functional use, you can fill inside of it just with a typical grid like the IKEA furnitures that you see. There's just a grid inside which actually gives a basic, basic structural strength to it, but it is not actually very strong for the purpose. But imagine if you're printing something like a, a 3D wrench or a, a 3D screwdriver or something like that, then something like, uh, like filling it with hollow spaces would not help. You need absolute solid material. So that is where the slicing software helps you decide how much density you want to print the, the object with and how much strength you want to print that, uh, fill, how much uh, volume you want to fill inside that object. Imagine if you're doing uh, this bear example, for example, and uh, the hand of the bear, when, it, when, the, when the printer starts printing from here, it just cannot print it in the air here. So what the slicing software does is it establishes a thin line of string or something like that so that it gives a little bit of a base for this to print on. And that is the main purpose of the slicing software because it decides where it has to add the, the base material from the ground and where it doesn't need to add and how much strength it need to give for that, that for the base material. Also, imagine there's a difference between printing this object like this and printing this object like this. Because when you print this object like this, the slicing software has to spend a lot of plastic using uh, to arrange the material, the base material here. But the same object, when you print it this way, it has only very little base for which the slicing software has to waste on. But again, when you print it like this, there is so much area that the slicing software has to create a base on 
while you're printing like this, there is only this much surface area that the slicing software has to give this base on. It's a lot of calculations that we as humans cannot do easily. So it is best to leave that to the slicing software and a good slicing software will be able to decide uh, and will be able to show you the options of which direction to print the object because every time you put you turn the object in the, in the slicing software in this direction or this direction tells you how much material is being used, how many grams of uh, printing uh, plastic you're using and that will help you reduce the cost of your printing. The slicing software that I use is Ultimaker Cura. It is a really good software and uh, it's very, very easy to use. I've literally learned that software in half an hour's time. So I'm sure you can do that as well. And uh, there are also other slicing softwares like Simplify 3D, Matter Hackers, Slicer. And again, there are a lot more. Again, I will leave you in the description below the different slicing softwares that are available. But now that you have your 3D model and now that you have sliced it, the next thing to make your 3D model come to reality is a 3D printer. Well, you don't really have to own a 3D printer these days because there are many services available online where you can just email them your 3D model and then you pay them and then they courier you the 3D model home. So that is one of the very good options so that you don't have to invest into an expensive 3D printer. And most of the times the 3D printer that they own is much better quality than the 3D printer that you can actually afford to buy at home. So probably this is a good option to begin with. But and if you see that this 3D printing is your game, then you can probably then invest into a good quality 3D printer for your personal use. Because 3D printers are not cheap. 3D printers are nowadays starting from $500 and they can go all the way up to $12,000, $13,000. But well, when it comes to home purpose 3D printing, a very good quality 3D printer could cost you up to $3,000. They're still expensive. Probably in the next three to four years or maybe next two to three years, they might become much more cheaper uh, but at the moment, that's what they cost. And uh, if you want to invest into a good quality 3D printer, then probably you're looking around $2,500. But if you're looking for a basic model 3D printer to start with, then $500, $600, you can get one for yourself. There are hundreds of companies that are doing 3D printers now. One of them is uh, Creality, which is uh, a basic model, a good 3D printer. And you have also 3D printers coming from Polaroid. And uh, But one of the best 3D printers I've seen for home purpose use is from Ultimaker. Ultimaker makes some really good 3D printers. This video is not sponsored by them, but uh, I have noticed and I've researched quite a bit on their websites and other companies' websites. The main thing which I find amazing with Ultimaker 3D printers is that variety of materials that you can use for 3D printing, which will be our next topic, which we'll cover later. But when you're buying 3D printer, one thing that you need to keep in mind is can the printer print two colors parallelly at the same time or can it only print one color? This makes a lot of difference because if you can print three, two colors at the same time, then you can make much more complex objects or three colors or four colors, depending upon how many other colors it can print at the same time, in the same model, then that much complex models you can make. And if it can only print one color, then the ideal option is you just print the model and then you paint it with acrylic paints or something like that and then you get your colorful 3D model. The last topic that we're going to discuss today are the materials. The materials are very important when it comes to 3D printing because it, depending upon your need, uh, what you're going to use that 3D printed object for, you need to choose the material that you want. Well, one of the most common material that is used today for almost all 3D printing companies use is called PLA. It's basically one particular combination of plastic, which is, uh, which is an ideal, between, ideal balance between strength and rigidity and uh, weather protection and things like that. But if you have specific uses, like if you want flexibility in your 3D model. Imagine you're doing a, doing something like a band or something like that, where you need a lot of flexibility, then you need to choose a specific material for that. Imagine if you want something which has a, a lot of friction, then you need to choose a material that is specific to that. Or if you choose a, if you want a material that is used for as a tool, then you need something which has a lot of high density in it. So there are again materials for that. There are also transparent materials. There are also UV resistant materials. There are also chemical resistant materials. There are fire resistant materials. There are literally 40 to 50 different types of materials which offer different, different things. And, and based on your requirement and what you are developing as a 3D model, you can choose the material that you need. And this is one reason why, like I mentioned before, I like Ultimaker Cura because Ultimaker Cura is, uh, is uh, their 3D printer. They have left in like an open source. So you can use any of the materials even developed by the third parties onto their printers. So this gives you a lot more flexibility that you don't have to buy the, 
the printing material again from the same company. So I'm going to list you a list of uh, the basic materials which are there just to give you an example. PLA, uh, like I told you before, is a plastic, it's basic plastic. PVA, polyvinyl alcohol, that one is again high, highly resistant and it has quite, uh, quite a lot of strength. And then you have other materials like ABS, which offer a lot of high strength, toughness, and it is also available in multicolor. So which gives you an option to print it in any color that you want. And also you have some special materials like 95A, which again offer a lot of flexibility, like I mentioned you before. Also, there are third party companies, third party uh, materials, which you can use for 3D printing. Please see in the, in the, in the description below the, below the video, you can see a list of materials and what they are good for and all that. Also, I'll leave you a link to the Ultimaker materials uh, website where you can choose and purchase different materials from if you want to. That's everything I think you need to know to begin with 3D printing guys. So I think you will um, have a great journey learning to 3D modeling and 3D printing and hope you will make three wonderful 3D models. Thank you guys. Please subscribe to my channel if you're not a subscriber yet and help me bring before you more useful videos like this and have a great time. Enjoy 3D printing. Bye-bye.